Today, I want to share with you how to design with the chicken wire pillow and how I'm going to show how to use the Middleino extender as an extension of the pillow to be able to shape the design into a little bit more curvilinear form that has good support. So to get started with this arrangement using the chicken wire pillow, I had made this chicken wire pillow to actually fit perfectly to sit on top of this particular vase. So this is a no form design. So it's an alternative method of designing it into water that gives you really good support like you would in, in a foam. So to start with, I wanted to actually show you how to set this up so that I can then arrange into this to get a little bit of a profile uh, curvature of a curvilinear form. So I, what I wanted to do is to attach this to this chicken wire pillow so that it performs exactly what I'm talking about. So to do that, to attach those two pieces together, what I wanna do is take uh, Smithers Oasis bind wire and I'm gonna do the green because everything here is green. And I'm going to attach those two components together to get the shaping of this design started. So I have that, those pieces of bind wire. And what I want to do is actually create a connection on this one Middleino extender so that it, it, it holds together. So I'm gonna do this to it so that this back long piece is attached to that front shorter cur curving piece. And I'm also going to attach it together right here so that it sort of criss crisscrosses over and gives me a, a nice solid spine. So what I want to do is set this up so that it's attached to this pillow. So I'm going to take the bind wire and attach it in a couple places so that it stays together. So depending on the type of arrangement or the shape of the arrangement that you're making, and especially if you're wanting to create something that's a little bit more interesting beyond the usual geometric form, such as these curvilinear forms, you might want to actually attach the spine, this middle linear extender to the uh, pillow so that it's already set up to create a template for the shape that you want to create ultimately. I'm actually going to be doing a sort of very gardeny arrangement with the flowers I cut in the garden this morning and so that you can see how the curvilinear form really lends itself so beautifully to a garden style design. So in order to get this set in place, what I'm gonna do is actually start to work with some of the, the greenery that's gonna go into this to just start to surround the base of this, this, uh, this form with um, foliages to kind of stabilize it in place. So I'm going to take a couple of these pieces of magnolia and insert it into the side like there and maybe because this actually starts to put start to green out the base of this design and also stabilize at the same time. So by using these pieces I can start to create sort of more rigid placement of these pieces that helps start to set this design in motion. Next, I'm gonna use another set of foliages. And in this case, I think I'm gonna use the, um, the Dusty Miller, the Senecio Angel Wing. They're so beautiful, they're from my garden as well. Uh, I purchased some of these plants last year because they were so outstanding, so beautiful, and I love the color and the texture of it. So I'm gonna use that to actually stabilize also to the base of this design. So you can see how this goes like this, how it's a good start to the placement of how the material is gonna work into this design. I'm going to also use a little bit of, uh, let's see, maybe 
the um, Pierre's Japonica. I'm going to work on to either side of this design to add a little bit of that drape to the back of the design as well as to the front of the design because that'll help way to the front and to the back to start to balance, physical balance, this arrangement so that it flows to both, both sides. I'm also going to take um, a long ribus sanguinium, which is actually the red currant from the garden. And I am going to actually place this into this slot that I've created. That's the beauty of the structure uh, building with the Middleino extender is that you can actually get all your placement to stay in place. And that's sort of the beauty of this, the mechanics, the combination of the chicken wire egg or the pillow and the Middle Eno extender. One of my main feature that I want to show off from the garden right now is the rhododendron. It's so gorgeous. Uh, this one here, I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter that, so that it kind of sinks right at the base. And I'm realizing that I really do want to have a little bit of extension on this side to give it that sort of a slightly crescent form that I've been seeking to produce here. So now I can slip into this side and allow this to sort of lean in to that, that side of it to kind of create that beautiful, beautiful shape that you can see how that goes like that. So as I'm working with this frontally, and this is on the back side, I'm going to complement also the back side with um, flowers as well. So I'm going to take the rhododendron and place it maybe into the back side to give you a little bit sort of off-center fo focal mm -hmm. emphasis area. I'm going to take also this beautiful camellia that is just flushing right now. So, so beautiful. What I want to do is just trim this off a little bit to get multiple stems out of it so that it doesn't sit quite so heavy just on one side maybe like so, so that I can feature it right in this high side. And you can see that as I'm placing the flowers now into the grid, the uh, chicken wire pillow, it's lodges in very nicely because it's almost like designing into foam. It, it really is very stabilized and gives you a nice firm, um, very firm insertion because you have that double grid across the top and then below. That's the beauty of the pillow is that it has two points of insertion. So it holds up and, and shows up really, really well. And you can see that by now too, that most of the, um, the pillow is quickly disappearing. That's the beauty of um, the pillow versus uh, actually like foam. Foam is always visible, so you feel compelled to cover more and more and more of it to get rid of seeing it. But with as transparent as the pillows are, the chicken wire, all it takes is just enough coverage to make it, invi make it invisible. So I see a little bit of chicken wire in there, so I'm going to go in there with this. Actually, this is the viburnum. Uh, and that covers it up really nicely right in there. So I don't see the chicken wire. I see a little bit of chicken wire underneath here. I want to make sure that that is covered. So I'm going to go right in here and tuck this Burkwoodii right in there as well. So uh, you can see how those little spots where the chicken wire was showing, I'm just covering it up with a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And that's all it takes. Um, in fact, I see another spot that when I look down deep, I see a little bit of chicken wire there. So I'm going to just go ahead and tuck in this little cluster of magnolia. So really, I'm not seeing very much 
much chicken wire anymore. So all at this point, I can just sort of finish this up. I see from this side, this extension, I like the depth that I'm getting with this, but I'm not liking the shape of this. So I'm gonna kind of bring it back in so that it kind of gets caught up in here. This is where I do a little bit of manipulating by adding this to this. So I'm, I'm actually attaching a piece of malice to the ribus so that it kind of flows into one another. I'm tying it together with vine wire so it stays together. Cut off the ends so that it's clean, but it helps that look much more unified. I also wanna take another piece of malice, really a cute little piece here, and just develop a little bit of uh, dimension by adding this in so that as you turn this design, it's not just a two-sided design, the front and back side, but it does have a, a much more three-dimensional feel. So I'm gonna just tuck that in a little bit so that it has that as well. And you can see as you turn that it has a much more dimension than just flat across uh, two-dimensional um, sort of a, a curve, curvilinear. At this point, what I wanna do is feature, lastly, the beautiful Narcissus. This variety here is called Romance. It's really a lovely peach and cream color that seems to really complement this very beautifully. I wanna sort of tuck that in, in through the chicken wire so that it's right in there floating nice and high. Some of it, some of it, if I can get it to go down through the two layers of chicken wire. Let's see if I can just feel it out to see if it will go through. You can see how that flows together. Um, I wanna to put a couple of uh, this white Narcissus as well through here. So there's extension of that white. So really the last sort of touch for this particular design for me has to be what I call the addition of kind of the, the real alive element, the growing tips. And that's one of the things that you have to remember when you're designing in this kind of gardeny form design is that you're not gonna ever chop off the tips of any flower or chop off the growing tip of a vine because that's the most vital part of the, of, of the combination of plant material that you put together is that the visibility of the robustness of growth. And so what I thought, I have actually out in the garden, a couple of things that really shows that really, really well. One is actually vaccinium, which is, um, this is just a growing tip of the deciduous huck, huckleberry, and that's vaccinia. And what I wanted to do was tuck it in on the right-hand side right here, even though you know it's sort of a curvilinear, uh, almost a crescent, but I wanna just sort of flow it out, out of that crescent so that it flowed out and extends so that the growing tip is very visible. And then this is the other treasure. Like I like growing a lot of vine because I think vine and the growing tips and, and the way it sort of wanders that, so that so it's searching to grow out to the best spot uh, to bask in, in the sun or you know the elements. And I just think of any kind of material that is the most art nouveau, it truly is the vine. And that's why with a lot of garden design, it's so popular to use vines like jasmine and that. And right now my jasmine is rather um, it's still in such an early stage and it's not available to cut just yet. So I found this on the side of the house, uh, just hugging to the building and I thought, oh, this is perfect. So you can see the finished result is very highly dimensional, even though it is a curvilinear form that's sort of set up by the combination of the chicken wire pillow with the Midolino extender extension attached as a bit of a trellis to support the curvilinearness of the, some of the, the line extension, especially of the ribus sanguinium, which is the red currant, by the way. 
Um, but really, it's it it's just makes it a little bit more dimensional uh, by adding uh, sort of the flow of the curve going to the other side, but not necessarily making a perfect curve because that seems a little bit too contrived. Especially with the garden flowers, you want it for it to follow somewhat the trellis, but not perfectly groomed. Because a key with the curvilinear form is if you do it in its original form, the, the crescent or Hogarth curve, it becomes very shaped. And really in this case, what we're doing is using it to guide us, to give us a little bit more height and a little bit more flow that doesn't swing in any arrangement, especially when it's just designed into water. So that's the reason why we use the combination to make this mechanic work. But you can see the sampling of all the different flowers that's been cut out of the garden, beautifully presented in such a way as they grow. You can see the vaccinium flowing outwards. You can see the vines flowing in and through here and in and through. Um, the ribus arching over as they do over the, the walkways. So we're really respecting a lot of what actually is seen at, before you cut the flowers out in the garden at, out of the plants themselves and keeping it nice and deep and dimensional so that it's not just a flow like this, two dimensional, but it's a flow that guides what is surrounding that whole area. And I think that way you can see how it really develops a beautiful flow, great dimensionality, and that it looks from good from all the way around the design that feels like just piece of the garden out there. And I think that's really the whole idea behind designing inspired by the garden, designing naturally, designing with transparency that there's spaces and that every flower has its own spot and that they're not just sitting on top of each other. Giving it air, giving it breathing room, giving it its presence is really one of the most important thing about creating a design that really sings, that makes you feel like it's just so beautiful and how we're so lucky to work with such beautiful products. So if you enjoyed the tutorial in this video, if you really enjoyed the way this is designed and knowing the ins and outs of the techniques and mechanics involved, give it thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.